In this chapter, we'll discuss the Ether token. Ethereum's native currency is known as Ether or ETH, similar to how the Bitcoin protocol's native currency is the Bitcoin token. Payment along the Ethereum network is always required to be made in the protocol's native token, Ether, regardless of whether you want to make simple peer-to-peer -peer payments or execute more complex smart contract reliant transactions. These transaction fees are often referred to as gas fees, and this subsequent requirement for Ether to be involved in the facilitation of every single network transaction creates a potential linkage between developers building useful applications and the Ether token accruing value. Validators are integral to the proper functioning of the Ethereum network. They stake their Ether and help confirm transactions and additionally help to keep the network secure, receiving a yield for their efforts. Ethereum's issuance schedule of new Ether is not fixed, but rather follows a minimum viable issuance. Ethereum's future issuance schedule revolves around keeping validators incentivized to securely validate transactions on the network. As a result, the future issuance policy of Ether is largely unknown. To date, the issuance rate has been reduced multiple times. The addition of burning ETH as part of a recent upgrade has resulted in days where the net issuance of ETH is negative or more ETH is burned than minted. Burning is simply the act of sending a specific amount of tokens to a wallet that has no access key, effectively removing these tokens from the outstanding token flow. In many ways, Ethereum's issuance schedule can be viewed similar to that of a corporation's share issuance and repurchasing strategy. It is generally accepted that repurchasing shares at certain times can reduce outstanding share count and help grow shareholder value. Similarly, issuing shares when a corporation needs capital may also make sense. This analogy is not without faults, as ETH issuance is intended to increase the security incentives for the network, rather than fund Ethereum or its developers in the way that corporate share issuance provides funding for public companies, but it does help illustrate how Ethereum's issuance of its own native token is intended to work. The network aims to issue the minimum amount of Ether possible to maintain network security, just as corporations issue and retire shares to try to maximize capital allocation decisions. The burning feature also reduces supply, and if continued over time, may provide a natural price catalyst, assuming it is combined with continued demand for the network. Similar to most corporate share programs, Ethereum's future supply schedule is unknown, but it is intended to be altered in what is deemed to be in the best interest of the network. There are other tokens besides ETH on the Ethereum network. Unlike Bitcoin, Ethereum easily allows for non-native tokens to exist on its network rails. These non-ETH tokens can be either fungible, meaning they can be exchanged for other tokens, or non-fungible tokens, also known as NFTs. Fungible tokens, also known as ERC-20 tokens, are often used in the funding and development of decentralized applications on the Ethereum network. Non-fungible tokens, an emerging trend in digital assets, represent unique assets that are not interchangeable and for which true ownership is represented on the blockchain. These tokens represent some of the biggest use cases for the Ethereum network and consequently the Ether token.